Hello, this is Carl Irwin with another uh, Blender tutorial. Uh, I've been uh, putting out these uh, tutorials and these demonstrations concerning the application of uh, shadows in OpenGL uh, real-time uh, GLSL viewport uh, rendering uh, without using any lights or any kind of lighting in the scene, uh, using only uh, uh, shadeless materials, but using point lights to create uh, shadows and spotlights to create more defined shadows. And I invite you to look at those uh, tutorials if you look back on my YouTube channel to the couple of recent tutorials that I put up. Um, but uh, it doesn't end there. I actually want to show you one uh, more, one additional uh, viewport compositing trick that I've discovered uh, using uh, the various texture and material slots and node uh, material slots available to us in the GLSL uh, shading mode. Um, I've discovered that uh, not only can we create and fabricate uh, systems for uh, creating um, shadeless lighting and shadeless uh, shadows, uh, we can also create uh, shadeless uh, Z passes that work in real time, at least in some limitation. So, for example, we have Suzanne here on this plane, and you can see that it seems to fall off into the uh, background uh, from the camera viewport. And uh, if we uh, take hold of Suzanne here, and we move Suzanne on the y-axis away from the camera, uh, you can see what happens. Uh, it appears that Suzanne is moving back in z-space and uh, being occluded uh, from our view by some sort of atmospheric effect. Uh, uh, appears to be moving back in space and uh, being surrounded by this uh, atmosphere. Now, before I explain uh, how this is done, and this is done in real time, if I move the camera around, uh, I want to show you kind of the, really the bogus nature of what's happening here. This is not true Z-depth. This is not a true Z-pass. What we're doing is we're pulling off a compositing trick using a uh, texture setting. And just to demonstrate what I mean here, the limitations, uh, from this viewpoint my Z-depth should be changing uh, so that now this is fully uh, in, in focus and, and uh, clear of any kind of atmospheric effect, but then back here we should see this atmospheric effect. It should rotate. And in fact, if I move Suzanne from this point of view, you can see it's as if Suzanne is moving into some sort of fog band here. This is not real Z-depth. Um, you can see what's happening here. It also has limitations in that if I move Suzanne back too far, watch what happens uh, to the texture. Maybe you can't see. Let's see if what happens here. Oh, well, maybe not. At some point, well, it's making a liar out. Oh, there we go. At some point, you can see that the uh, texture uh, comes back. If I go back to my camera view, you can see Suzanne suddenly, once we get back far enough, uh, Suzanne's uh, texture comes back on and it sort of cycles all over again. So what, uh, this has some limitations in terms of depth, and those limitations can be moved, it can be calibrated to fit whatever your needs are, um, but this is not a real Z-depth pass. Now, <clears throat> in the past I've been using lights in order to create these types of masks, and I tried to do that, uh, creating lights on different layers, and uh, perhaps you could do this on a different scene and make a compositing layer uh, to be used in the video sequence editor, but I wanted it in real time right in one scene, right in the same uh, uh, viewport. And uh, using lights wasn't really going to work that way because moving lights to different layers really limited the use of those lights with respect to material. So I had to come up with another way. So ultimately, this is what I came up with. Um, I'm going to uh, jump into a uh, the uh, node uh, setup here for this texture. And uh, let me open up the node view. And I'm not going to talk about the shadows. You can see those other tutorials to uh, see how that works. Uh, but I want to talk quickly about uh, just the Z-pass issue here. I have a material in here, and the material is a Z-depth material. And what it is, is it's actually a, uh, uh, a texture. It's a gradient texture, uh, white to black, that has been applied to Suzanne and also to the floor. And uh, the material, if I see if I can find it here, Z depth, you really can't see it, but there's one texture in here. It's, it, it's actually a black to um, a black to transparent gradient. And if I uh, open up the uh, slot here and I find it, 
It's actually this right here. It's something that I might use for a shadow pass, uh, as I explained uh, in the other tutorials, to, to generate a false sense of shadow on the top of an image. And it goes to a gradient. Well, I open this up, and I apply it to a white texture, or rather a white material. And uh, this is just applied as, uh, applied as an overlay. And the key is that I set the uh, mapping to global. And what this does is it creates a global map that works from our perspective from the camera away. So that um, nearest the camera is the white portion of this gradient, and furthest from the camera is a dark portion of the gradient. And if I move Suzanne here, I think this should work. If I move Suzanne on the y-axis, you should see as Suzanne moves further away, it gets darker and more black. And then closer to the camera becomes more white. And actually, I should get to a point past the camera here where it becomes black again. You can see what's happening. Suzanne turns black because that texture is repeating in the global uh, area. So if I come back to my camera and uh, we move uh, Suzanne back. Now what I've done, I might change my, uh, my texture back. What I've done in the node setup is I applied this material, this single material, uh, as a factor for a mix node so that whenever Suzanne occupies that space that color that black will become the factor for this mix and then I have for my color the background color uh, that is a, a, a color that is compatible with the background that then overlays all of my other texture and material settings so that Suzanne seems to disappear and this is really how a z-pass would be applied in most uh, compositing settings anyway so I had to do this for not only Suzanne but also for the floor uh, material as well so I applied this I put on an RGB curve to just tighten it up a little bit uh, notice that uh, on this material if I go back to that material my z um, depth material uh, and I go to the material settings, I had to dial in exactly how this was going to fit in the global texture. So the, the size had to be 0 0.04 to really stretch it out in uh, global space from the camera viewpoint uh, it, it, so that I would get uh, white very close to the camera and black as far away as, as I could get it. Uh, and uh, I also had to change my uh, offset just a little bit uh, to point 0.2 to just kind of shift that around, negative point 0.2 in fact, uh, to get it to sit exactly right in world space. So the global coordinates are being used to create this uh, material that we are using. Uh, let me change this back here real quick. You can take another look at it. and I'm going to show you a, a compositing application. So just one more look. If I uh, grab Suzanne and remove Suzanne in uh, Y space, you can see how this looks. And uh, just to quickly show you one render from the viewport, click on the uh, GL render button, and just a second later, I've got my full render, and it looks pretty convincing and nice and clear, including those shadows that I used before. Now, the reason why I can't use lights, and you could use lights, by the way, just like we did with the shadow. The problem with using lights to accomplish this is that I'm already using lights, and if I used more lights, uh, they would uh, interfere with each other in the materials that I'm using for the shadow and the uh, Z uh, pass. So, uh, if you were just doing a Z pass, you could do this just using lights if you had no need to create shadows anywhere else. Like if you were using an object that was flying in space but wasn't casting shadow anywhere, you could just use a light, a point light. And in that case, you actually could create a very realistic, accurate Z-depth uh, kind of material. Uh, but if I want to combine them, I have to use this kind of uh, a trick. Now to show you an application, we'll go to another scene. And uh, in this scene, I have Suzanne again. Uh, change the color so it would uh, be a little bit more clear. And you can see Suzanne back there in the same city uh, atmosphere that we've seen before. And as I move Suzanne forward on Y space, watch what happens uh, to the coloring. So you can see here Suzanne is very, very clear. Uh, this green color with some uh, false lighting and false shadow that's on there. And I have my uh, transparent uh, shadow. And I'll hit the render button just to show you how clear this is. And watch what happens when I move Suzanne back in Y space. Again, these materials are applied the same way using those global material setting. And I move Suzanne back uh, about halfway in, in depth here. And then I render again, and you can see how this is uh, applied. You can see that Suzanne seems to be occluded in the atmosphere and taking on the color of the uh, background.
Now the way this is done is that you just, instead of using uh, the background straight color, the blue color, uh, in the node setup, I just take a neutral color from the background. So I took this tan color, which seems to be a common uh, kind of atmospheric color in the background, and I'm using that uh, to, as my atmosphere color. And uh, again, Suzanne can only go so far back before, well, before the uh, ge geometry starts to look funny, because I don't have my aspect quite right, my ratio set, but uh, it only works so far until uh, Suzanne's uh, um, uh, uh, material will fail and it will start over again. So this has some limited application, but it does have some solid application nonetheless. And uh, this could be a very powerful tool in doing some very fast, uh, real-time, uh, full compositing, all-in-one scene uh, rendering uh, using the OpenGL function. So I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, I'm sure I'll have more tutorials to come soon concerning some other uh, types of compositing tricks using the shadeless materials from the uh, viewport, uh, but I just wanted to share this one additional little uh, trick here that uh, maybe you can apply in your own project. So gradient, uh, dark on the top, light on the bottom, apply it as a texture in its own material, uh, make sure it's set to uh, uh, mapped to world, uh, world mapping, and uh, you can play around with those settings to get it to stretch just right, and then apply it in the node editor as a, a factor on a uh, color uh, mix node, and uh, you're set to go, good to go, and you can have some, uh, some realistic um, z-depth uh, kind of compositing right in uh, real uh, real time open gl glsl uh, render mode so good luck with this and uh, i hope you find a good use for this and i wish all of you happy blending